filtration, you have three options, a sump, a hang on the back, or a canister filter. When you're starting out, I recommend keeping it simple. If you have the space under your stand, go for a sump. There are many benefits to a sump, but the number one reason is that your evaporation line will also be hidden from the tank. If you're using a hang on the back or canister filter, I can't imagine you'll be using the auto top off systems. Years ago, I was that hobbyist, running a fluvo canister filter and flooding my house every time I had to get it going again. Honestly, I can't see anyone using a canister filter today. It's basically a nitrate factory. With salt water, you need good mechanical filtration, something that removes waste immediately from the water column. Storing waste in your canister or filter media for a long time isn't really removing it, it's just letting it sit there and rot, which can cause high nitrates and phosphate spikes, leading to algae issues. A sump gives you the flexibility. You can easily add things later, like an algae turf scrubber, UV sterilizer, refugium, marine pure blocks, just to name a few. To start your aquarium, you can keep it simple. Add a filter sock, filter pad, or a black sponge, which is what I use, or a fleece roller filter, and you're good to go. After the cycle, all you need is a protein skimmer. If your nitrates are high, do a 50% water change. You'll be fine. A lot of people use protein skimmers during the cycle, but it doesn't really make sense to me. You're trying to get your tank dirty for the cycle to complete. Removing everything too early will only slow down things. Wait until after you add your first fish to start running your skimmer. It doesn't really make sense. If there's no nutrients in the system, skimmer is not really going to perform well anyway. Now for chemical filter. Chemical filter is just a media that absorbs stuff from the water. I recommend ChemiPure Carbon. I tried to avoid it for years because of the cost, but it's the only carbon I've found that actually lasts for three to four months without leaching organics back into the water column. I've had firsthand experiences with other carbons that just don't cut it. Trust me, don't try to save a buck on carbon. You'll end up spending the same amount because you'll need to replace it every few weeks. ChemiPure is something I change out every three months, and even if I leave it for four months, I don't have to worry. I think they price it high because they know their product is that much better. So thank you, Chemi Pure Carbon. You should sponsor this video and send me a lifetime supply of your product. Just kidding. There are other chemical filters on the market, such as GFO for removing phosphates. But let's not worry about that just yet. Set up your tank first, get it running for a few months, and then come back to it. Chances are you won't need it. A lot of people swear by it, but it's expensive, especially the good stuff like Rolfos, which is what I would recommend. Now let's talk about biological filtration. Any surface in your aquarium will be used for nitrifying bacteria, which converts harmful ammonia and nitrites, and then into less toxic nitrates. The more bacteria you have, the stronger your biological filter will be. Make sure you have plenty of rocks, sand, or biological media in your sump to hold these bacteria. You can't really have too much, but having too little is a problem. This part of the filtration is essentially free. As long as you're providing surface areas, the bacteria will grow on the sand, rock, and other surfaces in your tank. Before adding live rock, make sure your ammonia and nitrates are at zero. You can speed this up by adding nitrifying bacteria starter and testing regularly, or just dose the product and wait two weeks before adding your first fish. If you have access to another established tank, as for a piece of live rock, it only takes about a pound or so to introduce highly active biological strains to your system. If your system doesn't have space for a sum, you might have to go with a hang on the back filter or all in one tank. The benefit here is that you don't need to do any fancy plumbing or have to do gymnastics to get into your stand. If you go this route, I highly suggest getting a hang on the back filter that includes a skimmer. Once you're comfortable with the basics and your fish are healthy, start testing for nitrates and phosphates. If they trend upwards and water changes aren't helping, consider investing in an algae turf scrubber or a refugium. If you have space in your sump, these can help manage excessive nutrients. But don't jump the gun yet. Get your tank going first and figure out what your system really needs. In the past, I overdid my nutrient export and ended up underdoing it in the new system. They say every tank is different, but they should really say that every tank's nutrient import and export is different. Treat your system as an independent entity and don't just copy what others are doing. You'll hear people with amazing tanks talk about them dosing vodka, vinegar, sugars, or using bio pellets. You'll be tempted, but do nothing unless your tests show you need that. 